Hello everyone. I hope this video finds you well and bearing the solace of social isolation well. If not, I pray that this time will bring you some solace and peace. Have strength. Jesus knew what it was like to be alone. Indeed, he still knows. And even though he may feel distance, in fact, he has never been closer to you. God bless you all. I have this morning enlisted the help of some children. Um, I know the children and they're going to bring a little bit of variety. Um, and I also want to keep them involved in the worship of the worldwide church. Forgive us if the video gets a little bit uh, jumpy uh, or gappy um, occasionally as they swap places and get themselves sorted. They're going to be reading some of the prayers and Bible verses. Um, all the prayers this morning have come from Christian Aid. Um, it is Christian Aid week this week. Today is uh, Christian Aid Sunday. Um, and now more than ever, people are in need not just of money, uh, but of gifts, food, company and God's peace and presence. Let's remember that as we worship this morning. Uh, finally, before we uh, begin with a prayer, let me please say that uh, although I know this will come as a surprise to many of you, uh, worship does not have to involve music. Many of us find it helpful. As, uh, as you know, I very much enjoy making a joyful sound to the Lord. Um, however, I've had to learn in this time that opening my mind and heart to God in silence is just as valuable. Please use this time to do so. However, if you do want to listen to some songs, can I recommend a couple of Matt Redman songs to you? Um, Blessed Be Your Name, uh, reminding us that however hard things got, get, our God is deserving of praise. And secondly, 10,000 Reasons, reminding us all of the blessings that God has given to us and how much better off we are than so many in this world. Let's come before our God in prayer. Sebastian and Imogen are going to start us off now. Loving God, we seek your presence in the silence beyond words, looking to your comfort, looking to you for comfort. Strength, protection and reassurance, breathing with gratitude, holding on to hope, trusting with faith that you are still God in the midst of turn oil and that you are and that your love reaches to the end of earth. Be, be presented with us now. Amen. May your love that never fails strengthen the weak, encourage the fearful, calm the anxious, heal the sick through your church, your watched hands and feet on earth. Distant but still present, virtual but still con connected, apart but still helping, God in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. So last week, Helen took us um, on the first stage of Paul's first missionary journey. It, you may remember that Paul and Barnabas have been in Paphos, and while they've been there, they freed the king of Paphos of the evil influence of a sorcerer um, by the name of Bar-Jesus. From Paphos, Paul and Barnabas travel by boat to Perga and then to Pisidian, Antioch, where Paul ends up preaching a very influential sermon. At the end of this sermon, the Gentiles in the town feel blessed, but the Jews, obviously feeling threatened, drive Paul and Barnabas out of the town, and they shake the dust from their feet and move on. This reading takes us to the beginning of that sermon. From Paphos, Paul and his companions sailed to Perga in Pamphylia, when, where John left them to return to, to Jerusalem. From Perga, they, they went on to Pisidian, Antioch. On the, on the Sabbath, they entered the synagogue and sat down. 
After the reading from Law and the Prophets, the leaders of synagogues sent word to them, saying, Brothers, if you have a word of exhortation for the people, please speak. Standing up, Paul motioned with his hand and said, Fellow Israelites and you Gentiles who worship God, listen to me. The God of people of Israel, the God of people of Israel, of Israel chose our ancestors. He made the people prosper during their stay in Egypt. With mighty power, he led them out of the country. For about 40 years, he endured the, their, conduct, their conduct in the wilderness. And he, over, and he overthrew seven nations in Canaan, giving their giving their land to his people as, they inherit, in the, as their inheritance. All this took was about 450 years. After this, God gave them judges until the time of Samuel the prophet. The people, were asking, the people asked for a king. They gave them Saul, son of Kish of the tribe of Benjamin, who ruled 40 years. After removing Saul, he made David their king. God testified concerning him. I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do anything I want him to do. From this man's descendants, God has brought to Israel the Saviour Jesus, as he, as he promised. Before the coming of Jesus, John preached repentance and baptism to all the people of Israel. As John was completing his homework, he said, Who do you suppose I am? I am not the one you are looking for, but there is one coming after me whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. Fellow children of Abraham and you, you God-fearing Gentiles, it is to us that this message of salvation has been sent. The people of Jerusalem and their rulers did not recognise Jesus, yet in condemning him they fulfilled the words of the prophets and that are read every Sabbath. Though, th though they found no pro proper ground for a death sentence, they asked Pilate to have them, him executed. When they had carried out all, this all that was written about him, they took him down from the cross and laid him in his tomb. But God raised him from the dead, and for the many days and for many days he was seen by those who had travelled with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. They are now his witnesses to our people. So I'm interested in what lessons Paul's sermon may have for us, and in true Steve style. I'm going to go for three things from the first half of this sermon. Firstly, the Israelites spent some significant time in isolation, 40 years in this case, during which time God endured their conduct. Secondly, God rewarded them afterwards, despite their conduct. And thirdly, it took quite some time for God to realise his plans. Notice that, his plans. But the, final, the finale, that was finally realised in the person of Jesus Christ. And, taking a direct quote from that passage, it is to us that this message of salvation has been sent. So, isolation then. In fact, Isolation is something that the Jews have written well into their history, not perhaps as individuals, um, although that does happen. Um, consider Joseph in the, the world, um, Moses, sorry, in, in the wilderness, just for example. Um, but certainly as a nation, 40 years we're told in the Bible, and then there's another 450 before they're established in their own lands. And during this time, God endures their conduct. I wonder what that means. What conduct is he referring to? 
Well, in fact, it's not actually that hard to find out, is it? It begins, um, that story, uh, with Moses coming down a mountain and discovering that the Israelites have uh, donated all of their gold and their jewellery and created an idol for them to worship. They valued it so much uh, that they gave up their own gold jewellery in order to make it. And then Moses sorts that out, and of course things don't get any better. They moan and they complain constantly. But during this time, they learn things. They learn to rely on God for the things that they really need in life. So much so that we still use parts of that story in our everyday language. Uh, You think about it, we we use the words manna from heaven. And that's a phrase which is understood by many, even if they don't know the reasons why. Living from day to day is learnt by the Israelites when they try to store the manna. And, of course, it rots away practically before their eyes. So many lessons are learned on that journey. I was listening to a Muslim speaking recently about how to celebrate Ramadan during the lockdown and how that's affected him. How he realised that the time of fasting is not actually about the size of the meal or the feast or the party at the end of the fast, but about what he can learn, spending time on his own, contemplating the nature of God instead of eating. Fasting is something that seems to have fallen out of vogue in Christian circles. It might be done occasionally uh, by individuals. Uh, It may be spoken of during Lent or even Advent, which of course used to be a 40-day fasting festival just like Lent. But as a community, we don't tend to fast anymore. And it does make me wonder what we're missing. What are we not learning by giving up this holy time dedicated to God? We are now, arguably, in a time of enforced fasting, fasting from company. And it's hard, much harder for some than for others, I know. I started swimming again two weeks ago. You know how much I have enjoyed doing that in the past. And I really struggled not doing it. And in the end, I thought, right, I'm going to I'm going to try this. And I've managed to do it now for two weeks on the trot. Um, And on my way, I noticed that so many people are out running, walking, taking exercise. So many that I had never noticed before when I was doing my exercise, when I was doing my swimming. People are learning. People are changing. They're adapting. They're doing things they didn't do before. And it is incumbent on us as Christians to do the same, to move forward with Christ during this time and ask him what he can teach us as we fast. Secondly, and much more briefly, God rewards the Israelites. And what a reward! He overthrows seven other nations in Canaan, And then gives the Israelites their lands as their inheritance. A land they can call their own. Now for us, what does that mean? Well, simply, if we go through this time of trial and hardship, if we learn from God, if we use our fast to spend time learning about the nature of God, contemplating his gift of salvation through Jesus Christ, we also will be rewarded. No, I do not know the nature of that reward. I think it's unlikely that we're going to be given a land of our own, never mind seven lands. But we have been promised a kingdom. We have been promised blessings all mine, 10,000 besides. But there is a gentle word of warning in this reading too. For the Israelites, it took 450 years. For us, God's timing is always and often inexplicable. And our temptation is to be impatient. But if we wait on him, we will be rewarded, very often beyond our wildest dreams. And so finally, fitting nicely into this last point, of course, a direct quote from scripture. It is to us that this message of salvation has been sent. It is to us that this message of salvation has been sent. We are heirs to the promise, 
And it is a promise. What the Israelites endured, what we are enduring, has a purpose and it is God's purpose. And we can make that purpose meaningful in our lives by seeking out God during this time. Relying on him, being blessed by him, and our reward will be immense. And it is to us that this message of salvation has been sent. You and me. All of us. Gentiles living in the promise and love of Christ. I'm going to let the children finish now. You won't see me again. Um, We will have some prayers by them. Um, And then we will end with the last prayer, read by Imogen being a blessing. But before I do, uh, Judith has asked me to pose a couple of questions for thought and discussion this week. So here goes. Our first question is, why do we not fast anymore as a Christian community or as individuals very often? And do we think that in actual fact it could have a useful place in our Christian journey? Secondly, What could we do differently during our lockdown lives to make this a worthwhile time with Christ? And finally, what lessons have we learnt or are we learning that we can take with us out of lockdown to develop our Christian lives as individuals and as a church? We're going to pray now. Sebastian's going to start us off and Imogen will finish for us. God bless you all. A prayer for times of isolation. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor nothing present, nor things to come, will be able to separate us from the love of God in, in Christ Jesus, our Lord. God of heaven and earth, in these times of isolation, apart from loved ones distant, from friends away, from neighbours, thank, thank you that there is nothing in all of creation not even coronavirus, that is able to separate us from your love. And may your love that never fails continue to be shared through the kindness of strangers looking out for each other. For neighbours near and far, all recognising our shared vulnerability, each of us grateful for every breath, and willing everyone to know the gift of full and healthy life. Keep us all in your care. Amen. A prayer for medical workers everywhere. Restoring and healing God, thank you for medical workers everywhere. Embodying sacrificial love in these challenging times, putting the welfare of others before their own staying away from their family and loved ones, comforting and comforting the concerned and bereaved reassuring the anxious and vulnerable, working to heal and restore people who are ill. Be their guide, strength, wisdom and hope. We pray for those in authority to do right by them for proper protective equipment to be provided and for their dedication to be met with much gratitude when they return home exhausted. We pray for medical workers around the world where resources and protective equipment are always short in supply, not only now but always. May these extraordinary times lead to deep and necessary changes in how our world works, resulting in genuine efforts to address the profound injustice of life expectancy being determined by geography to awaken us all to the reality of how connected we are, we all are, and to work together to create community and will, community and world we all want to be part of. So help us, God. 
Amen. A prayer for global pandemic. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, advent endures all things. N love never ends. Loving God, strengthen in our innermost being with your love that bears all things, even the weight of this global pandemic, even the endurance of watching for symptoms of patiently waiting for this to pass. While watching, we pray, keeping our gaze fixed on you and looking, looking out for our neighbours near and far. In still, we, sh we shake in our souls the belief and hope that all things are possible with your creative with your creative love of, for strangers, to become friends, for science to source solutions, for reassurance, to be... For resources. For resources to be generously shared, so everyone, everywhere, may have what they need. May your perfect love that knows no borders cast out any fear and selfishness that divides. May your love that never ends be our comfort, strength and guide for the well-being of all the glory of God. Amen. Amen.